Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 12, Psalms chapter 12, Psalms chapter 12. We're going to look at verses 6 and 7, Psalms chapter 12, verses 6 and 7. The title message is, Do You Believe in the Perfect Word of God? Do You Believe in the Perfect Word of God? Psalms 12, verses 6 and 7, Do You Believe in the perfect word of God. The Bible says, Psalms 12, verse 6, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Verse 7, Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? shed on Calvary's cross to wash all our sins away, past, present, future. And thank you for eternal life that you have bestowed upon us. We ask you, Lord, that you fill the pastor with your Holy Spirit, given the liberty and authority to declare your word unto the hearers. And please open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Help us to put our flesh down. Help us to put our feelings down. Help us to put down all the things that are happening in our lives and help us just put you and your word in front of everything so that we will be distracted so that we can change from the inside out. We need you, Lord. You don't need us. We want to be used by you, Lord God. Therefore, talk through your, talk through your preacher to declare the whole counsel of God unto us. Amen. If anyone needs to be saved, Lord God, please come with their hearts of sin, righteousness, judgment so that they can get saved. And for us, Lord God, help us to tremble at your word. Help us not to doubt your word. Help us to act according to your word and not just be hearers only. Protect us from the devil's attacks. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Do you believe in the perfect word of God? Throughout the generation of human beings, Devil's job is to put doubts in the minds of people. Yes. He started with Eve, Adam, and continued on and on. And it's sad to see that people don't have final authority. Yeah. People don't have something that they could go to as a go-to source when it comes to their spiritual matters. And that is the Bible. So the question comes to every single one of us who's here and who's listening, and to people that's around you, you should ask, do you believe in the infallible word of God? I mean, do you? Or do you believe in translations, right? Like there are a bunch of translations out there. Just to give a little bit of history, you know, Bible text comes from Antioch, Syria line, and Devil's Bible comes from Alexandria, Egypt line. Yes. And from there on, you know, a bunch of translations came out. So I'll just go quickly the list of, you know, Devil's Bible. You know, ultimately, if you know Catholic Bible, this is where it's from. And the new translations are using the same text from them. There's Clement, Origen, Eusebius, Vaticanus, Sinaiticus, Jerome, Alexandrinus. Reims, Douay Bible, there's a Lacanen, Trigel, Tikhtov, and ultimately came down to Westcott and Hort, and revised version came out 1881. So before that, before 1881, literally there's only two Bibles out there, King James Bible and Catholic Bible. And after 1881, we have like about 230 Bible versions that came out. And when we see Psalms chapter 12, Bible says God's words are pure words. So pure words of God, according to verse 7, God will keep them and preserve them from this generation forever. Amen. Why is it that King James Bible has been preserved and that their line has been preserved? 
And every other Bible that came out, it's just in and out. You know, it's like almost going into uh, in and out burgers, right? You eat quickly and you throw the wrappers away. It's been going that in and out, in and out, in and out. Does that mean that those Bibles are not preserved? They're not. Simple as that. If there's God's Bible, there's devil's Bible. Yes. If there's God's church, there's devil's church. Jesus Christ preached about hell a lot more than heaven. Amen. Why? Because he came to save sinners who are on their way to hell. And he has to point out people who's leading people to damnation. Yes. During those days, Pharisees and Sadducees, right? I mean, during these days, especially in the days of Laodicea, which is the height of apostasy, don't you think devil's got his, you know, workers sure. everywhere, not just outside, but inside. Yes. And especially people on the pulpit. You know, I don't care about their personal life, but if you're teaching the wrong doctrine and sending people to hell, I have to point you out. Amen. It's like this. I have a family who's walking towards the cliff and they're going to fall to their death. What am I going to do? Am I going to just say, hey, you know, they're following their guide. I trust their guide, even though they're devils, you know, children. I'll just leave them alone. Oh, is that you? Obviously not. No. If you have children, if your children is about to burn their hands on a hot stove, you're going to say stop. Right. You're going to probably yank them away. Yeah. And you're telling me to shut my mouth? No. When it comes to people sending people to hell, and when you are shutting your mouth, when other people are on their way to hell, especially when it comes to the Word of God, because through the Word of God, you and I get saved. Amen. And if you have the wrong Bible, it's going to get harder and harder and harder. Yes. People start going to, they're going to get confused and they're going to ask questions. Absolutely. Do you know why people still get saved through the other Bibles? Because their Bibles, their seed comes from King James Bible. Amen. That's why. Who are they trying to copy? Yeah. Are they trying to copy NIV? No. Are they trying to copy Revised Version, NASB? Are they trying to copy New Living Translation? No, they're copying, they're comparing themselves to the ultimate Word of God, which is King James Bible. That's it. Yes. Why is it that every other Bible have copyright? <laughs> and King James doesn't. Why is that? Amen. Man, I could print King James anywhere I want. Amen. Man, I could go to this, you know, island, you know, where there, nobody knows and nobody has the Bible. I could just print them out. Praise the Lord. And then, you know, distribute it. But why is it the other Bibles, like NIV, which came out in the 1970s, which is widely used by a lot of people, which I use, but I never opened it you know, when I was going to different church. Why is it that all those Bibles need to have copyright? Why? What are you trying to preserve? I know. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. Love of money is root of all evil. These publications, they're publishing more and more and more. Why? Because they want money. Yes. And why do they attack King James? Oh, it's old English. Huh? You know, there's a great book I recommend everyone to have. The New Age Bible Versions by Gail Rippinger. She did a study. King James Bible reading level is the easiest compared to new translations. Yes. I mean, it's not like it's her opinion. She put it in this computer software system, see the reading levels, and King James was the easiest to read. Wow. Praise the Lord. I mean, a lot of people who were illiterate, especially back in the days when education wasn't readily available to everyone. Yes. They read King James and they became very good literate. Amen. I mean, they were well-spoken. I mean, they probably right. read better than anybody who went to public that school word. this day and age. That's the type of word of God we're talking about. Let's look at verse 7, Psalms 12, verse 7. The Bible says, Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. God said he'll preserve his word. Yeah. Why do you question it? Why do people question it? Why do people think that King James Bible is only a good translation and not the perfect word of God? then you don't believe in perfect God. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, you don't believe that God is powerful enough to preserve his word? When he put his word above his name? Right. Let's go to the book of Psalms 138. Psalms 138. So as Bible believers, brethren, today, we have to realize how important this Bible is. Yes. And we can't stay silent. No. You cannot close your mouth. You got to open your mouth about King James Bible to every creature that you see. Amen. Because that might be the only chance for them to wake up, get saved, and if they're saved, get right with the Lord and yes. come to the right doctrine. Yes. Psalms 138 verse 2, Bible says, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified what? For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Amen. The word of God, the Bible says, you know, endure it forever. Yes. It's going gonna, it's gonna to last and last and last. And you think that there isn't perfect word of God out there. You know what it comes down to? You don't have faith. That's it. You don't have faith that God could preserve his word, inspire word of God, that God will have perfect word of God. That's it. You don't believe it. I mean, what else is there to it? Any Bible critics out there, any person who thinks that there's no perfect word of God, only the original is the perfect word of God, then you have no faith in God to preserve his word. Amen. And don't be a fool Coming to our church, going to other Bible-believing church, that you could look smart about it. To me, you look ignorant, you're dumb. Why? Because it's like your daddy told you, I love you, and I'm going to keep my word to my family forever. You're like, no, daddy, I don't trust you. You know, I'm just going to believe that what you say 10 years from now, it's never going to be the same. So after original translations, you know, Apostle Paul, Isaiah, so you think that things that came afterwards is not as true and perfect as before. You don't have any faith. You're the type who only has to see to believe. Right. That's not a faith. Faith is believing something that you can't see. Yes. So... Don't say that, you know, I'm a person, of, I'm a believer, I have a lot of faith, when you don't even believe that there's perfect word of God. And the saddest thing is that seeing so many false preachers, pastors out there who know the truth, they know. Mm -hmm. We talk to them, many of them. They believe that King James Bible is the perfect word of God. They're like, but I can't tell that to my congregation. Because some of them use NIV, some of them use NLT, some of them use, you know, NASB, some of them use this bunch of other ones, you know, NIV for t t teenage children and stuff. They're going to have uproar. Mm. They're going to leave my church. Mm. What about my stomach? Yeah. You know, I need money. <laughs> so they're like, okay, I'll keep it to myself. Yeah. But I'm just going to tell them it is the best translation. But I'm not going to force them. That's what you call compromise, the devil's child. Yes. They might be saved, but they're being used by the devil. Amen. Or they let devil use them. Yeah. Why would you not give him the best medicine? Why would you not give him best remedy, solution for their lives? Yes. Because why? They want to fill their belly. Yeah. A lot of children, they grow up in the church, and some of them go to you know, Bible-believing so-called, you know, Christian colleges, right, out there, like Bob Jones University, Tennessee Temple, you know, Dallas Seminary and stuff, you know, Pensacola Christian College out there. You know what they become after they come out? They used to believe the Bible is perfect word of God. And after they graduate, there's no perfect word of God. That's yeah. true. I only believe there's good translation. They lose their faith yes. because of those wicked scholars, so-called professor, prof, um, professors and teachers out there. Wicked. And when you don't believe in the perfect word of God, you have no final authority. No. That's what the devil wants you to be like, someone without final authority. Right. When you don't have final authority, your opinion matters the most. Right. Yeah. 
You are God, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Even though Psalms 12, 6 and 7 says God will preserve his word forever. Nah, it's only a good translation. I'm going to hop over to NIV, right? And other Bibles, which completely change the meaning of verse 7. Yeah. Instead of referring to the word of God, they're referring to generations. They're referring to Israel. It changes. Yeah. So people lose Side of truth. Oh, yeah. You know what? This is what Oregon did. This is what Eusebius did. This is what Clement did. I can't believe that Jesus is God. Mm -hmm. I can't believe in Trinity. How can Jesus be God? I'm going to not believe in deity of Christ. So what am I going to do? I'm going to change the text. I mean, we know the, one of the strongest verses that shows that Jesus is God is in 1 Timothy 3.16. Let's go to 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy 3.16. If you had any doubts, if you're on the fence, or if you were even deceived all these years by the devil and the, his crowd, it's time for you to wake up Amen. and see that there is perfect word of God out there. And according to the text, according to the history, according to the preservation, Without any errors, that's King James Bible. That's it. Why would you look at anything else? 1 Timothy chapter 3, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. 1 Timothy chapter 3, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. The Bible says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God became a man and died for you and me. Woo! Thank that's you, Jesus Lord. Christ. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Bible says he is God. Let's see what our new Edious versions say, uh, right? Yeah. Beyond all question, the mystery of Godliness is great, okay? He appeared in a body. He? he. Yeah, I know, he. He could be just anybody. Yeah. Oh, are you referring to Jesus Christ? Yeah. But it doesn't say he's God. Yeah. Simple as that. Omitted the deity. Very sneaky. Yeah. Very sneaky. I mean, if you can't believe that Jesus is God, I mean, how are you ever going to get saved? Right. Savior and Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, who is God. Amen. Okay. Not only that, the newer versions, they do a great job of deceiving people. Let's go to 1 John. 1 John chapter 5. I mean, this clearly shows Trinity. 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. Verses 7 and 8. So now they're like, you know what? We can't omit the whole verses. I mean, I'll go to omitting the whole verses. Like, you know what? We'll just get rid of the verses that shows, you know, deity yes. and the Trinity. Let's look at. 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, Bible says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Trinity. Proof of Trinity. Amen. And these three are one. Wow, what a powerful verse. Yes. And verse 8, And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three are green one. So verse 7 and 8, new translations, they change it to, For there are three that testify. And everybody says, testify. The spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are in agreement. What about the verse 7, where it says the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one? Wow. New translations just omitted it. Yes. They don't want to believe. No. They don't want to believe that Jesus is God. No. They don't want to believe in Trinity. And there are a bunch of verses where they omit Jesus, Christ, God, and everything. Yes. Why? Because they don't believe it. No. Simple as that. And beyond that, the devil wants to confuse people. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you and I, I believe that we do all have brains to be very intelligent. Which means that you and I can have you know, good or bad opinions based on someone's view. If my opinion is Jesus is God, your opinion is Jesus is not God, but we don't have any final authority. It's just a good opinion. Right. But 
if we both know that a fine authority is the Word of God, which is King James Bible, then we can actually have a good conversation. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's why, what is the meaning of Bible-believing church? Just do what the Bible says. Amen. Simple as that. Yes. You preach the Word of God, right? You study the Word of God. I mean, when churches, preachers, pastors, ministers, we don't teach everything out of the Bible, that's when apostasy happens. Yes. Right. That's when churches go down straight to hell, yes. right? Think about it. New versions, obviously, they hate the word hell. They don't want to hear about hell, yes. right? No. I mean, besides from Bible-believing churches, when do you ever hear about, you know, preachers preaching about hell, preachers preaching about sin? I mean, I went to a secular church for eight years. They never preached about hell. Right. They just asked me to repeat after them a prayer every Sunday. I didn't know what I was doing, right? Yeah. I, they didn't talk about sin, the judgment, and anything. Right. But I understand a little bit because they were using NIV. How can they find truth? They can't. No. All they're going to say is, Jesus is love, Jesus is love. Yes. And Jesus is love crowd. They're all about procreation. They're all about idolatry. And they're all about fornication. Yes. Amen. Just like the way of Balaam, just like the way of Jezebel, just like the way of Nimrod, just like the way of Babylonian church. Yes. I mean, don't get mad at me. Talk to, I mean, talk to the Lord. It's what Bible says. Amen. Right? If I, God forbid, if I say anything against the word of God, let me know. You know, yes. I got to get right. Yes. Obviously, you know, nobody's perfect. But as long as you and I preach and teach from the word of God without omitting anything, yeah. without skipping anything yes. from Genesis to Revelation, every word, then we're going to be okay. Yeah. Right? Yes. But people are not okay this day and age. Why? Because they don't preach every word of God. No. You know, people love to preach about Abraham and his blessing. You got to be blessed. You're going to be blessed. You know, sacrifice money, you know, <laughs> give it, give it, give it. You know, it's so sad, you know, when you, when these, you know, fake, these false preachers are going after elderly people yeah. who's weak and weary and sick. Mm-hmm. Send money. I mean, their social security check, it's not even a lot. Send it. Yeah. You know, God's going to give you more blessing and blessing. You know, just max out your credit card. Then God's going to increase that credit card by hundredfold, thousandfold. And they, I mean, these older people are, you know, living worse than ever after they retire. Why? Because they fall into those traps of, you know, these false preachers giving all that they have to them. I mean, well, what do Catholic Church do? Yeah. When someone passes away, they say, give everything. You want to take him out of purgatory? Give everything that you have. I mean, widows are already like, that's hard. With, yeah. I mean, their living is hard. Yes. But you have to give up everything else. I mean, people are really, really deceived. Yes. And as Bible-believing Christians, you can't be shutting your mouth up any longer. Amen. How hard is it to talk about King James Bible? I mean, it's easier than talking about salvation to tell the truth. Yeah. I mean, people are like, oh, you don't tell me I'm going to hell. Well, you start talking about the Bible issue, whether they're saved or not. They're like, oh, okay, okay, let's talk about it, you know. You know? They'll, they'll be more interested. I mean, I'm not sure when was the last time you stood for the King James Bible. I don't know when was the last time you actually talked about it to anybody, right? I mean, when we go out witnessing, you know, after we, you know, someone gets saved, we right away, you know, what we do is usually, you know, talk about the King James Bible. You gotta use the right Bible, right? Yes. Think about it after you get saved and then you start using, you know, wrong Bible. Mm. There's gotta be no growth no. in it. And devil did a great job. Let's go to first Peter chapter two. First Peter chapter two. After you get saved. The devil doesn't want you to do anything. No. The devil just wants you to become a, you know, no good, complaining Christian. Yeah. 
And that's the majority of Christians in this world. They don't do anything for God. They don't stand up for the word of God. All they want to do is, you know, have fun at the church. Not that you and I can't. But our purpose at church and everywhere else is to learn the word of God, get convicted by preaching, Amen. grow in the word of God, and have a fellowship with brethren. Yes. That's it. It's not a social club where you come and start handing business card out. Right. You know? Hey, I have a business here. You know? Here, 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 here. You know, if we had like thousands of people, you know what? I only have to you know, get 50 business from these thousand people. Yeah, then my business will grow. And it becomes a social club. And that's not what, you know, Lord bought with his precious blood for this church to be. No. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. The Bible says, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that he may grow thereby. And new verses change it to, to work out right. your salvation, to get to your salvation. What are they saying? You believe, and there's still work needs to be involved. Mm -hmm. So when verses are changed like that, what happens? People can't have assurance of salvation. And even if before they get saved, they look at these verses, you know what? I have to believe, and I have to do good works. That's why it's prevalent everywhere. Works by salvation. They're like, oh. You know, I didn't do anything for Christ today. I died today. I burned in hell. Or am I going to go to hell? They start questioning because they don't have fine authority. Right. They're like, oh, I need to see Jesus in order for me to have confirmation. I mean, if you are looking for Jesus to show up in your vision, dream, and stuff, you know, you're not talking about the God of the Bible. No. You're talking about God of this world, right. which is the devil. Amen. Yes. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let me see. I don't want to get confused. First, it's 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to start looking at verse 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13. For such are false apostles. So, Apostle Paul is warning against false teachers. What does that tell you? There's always going to be false teachers out there. Right. Yes. And he wants his body of Christ to know. He wants Church of Corinthians to know. He wants Church of you know, Ephesus and everywhere to know. Yes. And I want you to know. Yeah. Thank and you need other people to know. Yes. Well, I mean, if cancer is spreading, you got to stop it. Little leaven, leaven, leaven is the whole lump. Right. If you want people to die of you know, spiritual cancer, good for you. But I don't want to see them die like that. You are the most heartless person. You say, I don't want to offend them. I always say it. It's better to offend them and don't offend Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. What is your standard in your life? Right? And that's why numbers are our end game in our church. It's all about more people getting saved, people growing in the word of God. Right. You know, if I wanted to preach like any of those you know, false ones out there, I guarantee you, We'll have every single person filled to the brim. Yes. Because I don't have to preach about sin and hell. No. If I drop those two, mm -hmm. it's growing and growing and growing. Yeah. If I stop preaching about King James Bible and against other Bibles, it's going to grow and grow and grow. You know how many people who came to our church and stopped coming because we stand for the King James Bible? Wow. Countless. Yeah. I get messages like, you know, Pastor, I like everything. I like preaching. I like the people, fellowship, congregation. But one thing I can agree is that King James Bible is the only perfect word of God. Mm. It's just a good translation. I mean, I, I mean you would think yeah. 
not to put, you know, sister on the spot, you know. I mean, Sister Lori is the type of reaction that I had. When I found out that when I was using NIV from Acts chapter 36 to 38, verse was missing. 37 was gone. Yes. When Jesus Christ said in Matthew 24, 35, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. I mean, it's not just that. I mean, if you were to go to, you know, we'll go a little bit, Matthew 18, 11, exact what he said. The new translation just got rid of it. Yes. There's no good explanation ever to make Jesus Christ a liar. No. And he shocked me. I mean, that's how it came to our church, you know. Yeah. Thank the Lord. I mean, wow. The Bible that I've been using has been the devil's Bible all these years. Yeah. Thank God I wasn't deep in it. You know? yeah. All I did was a praise and worship. You know, that's all I did, <laughs> right? But thank God, you know, I never got really deep into it. I, or I would have gone crazy. Yeah. I would have never had assurance of salvation. I would have probably been working my way to heaven. Yes. Right? But so I saw it and I'm like, wow, that's a shocker. Right? Because I believe in Psalms 12, chapter 7. I mean, verse 7, 6 and 7. I know God preserved his word. I know God is God who can preserve his inspired word throughout the whole eternity. Yes. Amen. But, you know, there's some people who hear it. No, nah, it's all right. It's not a big issue. How is it not a big issue? If someone said that your daddy is a liar, your mommy is a liar, things that came out of their mouth is a lie, are you going to just sit there when you know it's the truth? I mean, will our children just sit there? Like, but Richard, if someone tells Aeon, your dad's a liar. Even though you know he tells the truth, your dad's a liar, your dad's a you know, sneakster, your dad is just all this terrible thing. You think Aeon's gonna just sit there, oh yeah, 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 I'm happy, you know, I think you're right. No, normal child will get angry because you're attacking my father Amen. who's telling the truth. Yes. I mean, God is telling everything he needs to us, truth, through King James Bible. And people are attacking it. Aren't you angry at all? Yes. I mean, aren't you like, you know, I mean, there are certain things that you need to be angered about, righteous anger. Amen. If they are attacking perfect word of God, I mean, you should be angry. Amen. And you should be ready to give an answer to them. Yes. That's why you got to study. But I mean, we'll Amen. go to it. But looking at... 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. That's what they want to do. Yes. You know, con artists, people who practice fraud, they look real. Yes. That's why people get deceived. Yes. I mean, con artist just doesn't come with, you know, you know, devil bull and, you know, with a you know, most scary dresses. No. They come with the nicest outfit. Yes. They come with the cleanest look. And they stand in the pulpit. And then they do their own teaching and preaching. Yes. But Apostle Paul said, he's warning us. Transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. You know what? Brethren, people, God is love. God loves you no matter what. Right? Jesus isn't the only way, you know. You could go through Buddha. You could go through, you know, any religion, Mormonism, Catholicism. You know, pray to all of the idols. Wow. St. Bartholomew, you know, St. Pappy, St. Francis. You know, just pray to everybody. So many ways. One day you're going to all going to emerge into one place. That's right. That's ecumenical movement. Yes. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, John 14, 6. Amen. He didn't say everybody. He didn't say him plus another. No. He said just him. Yes. That's it. Let's continue. Verse 14. And this is the kicker. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Yes. I saw Jesus in my dream. God spoke to me. I'm saved. Sure. I feel new. I go to heaven. 
Why? Because at a summer retreat, Jesus talked to me. <laughs> I mean, after the Bible is completed, he's not talking to you. Amen. Only except through the word of God. Yes. yes. Just think of it as it's all coming from the devil. Yes. Right? That's it. You have perfect word of God. Why do you need any type of, you know, another vision or anything? Right. You know, who's giving it to you? The Bible says it's Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light because he wants to imitate Jesus Christ. Yes. yes. I mean, so many people, can you imagine? You know, someone shows up in your dream, goes, I am God. I am Jesus Christ. You are saved. You are going to heaven with me. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're not careful, yeah. and especially if you're any bit religious, you're going to think that that's from God. And I think that, and then once it's time to testify about your salvation, you'll be like, you know what? You know, everybody's giving their testimony. You know, I trusted Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, you know, back when, you know, and that's when I knew that I was saved. And that's what the Bible says. Your turn comes. You're so excited. I mean, these people are really excited yeah. because they love sharing this experience with people. Yeah. You know, I did those prayers, you know, but I'll tell you something better. He actually talked to me. Mm. God talked to me in my dreams. And next day, I felt so new. I love my wife more. I love my children more. I love human beings more. Those are type of, you know, testimony. Yes. You know what? I woke up. Man, these flowers, they were talking to me. The <laughs> nature seemed so much more grandeur, you know, everything. That's how the devil deceives people. Yes. That's at verse 15. The Bible says, Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers... So you have to discern. You need to differentiate between workers of God and workers of devil. If not, you're going to be deceived. Therefore, it is no great thing, verse 15, if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness... There are a lot of people who look real, who act real, but their heart is not real. Yes. How are you going to differentiate it if you don't have final authority? <coughs> you got to have some kind of standard to go by. That's right. Right? Yes. Bible says flee youthful lust, right? Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil. Yes. That's what the Bible said. What if I start telling you, you know, brethren, Go to all the bars. Pass out tracks. You know, it doesn't matter if you have bad testimony, right? You know, forget about, you know, being faithful to each other, right? Yeah. Go with another opposite sex, same sex, or it sex, <laughs> and try to witness to them. That's not the right way to do it. It is never right to do wrong in order to do right. Amen. That's why the Bible says, abstain from all appearance evil. You have to run away. Yes. You have to flee. Yes. But if I tell you otherwise, I'm a false preacher. Amen. I am that workers of iniquity. I'm that one that who's transformed as the minister of righteousness. But there are so many out there. There is. Yes. Then how are you going to know? How are you going to differentiate? How are you going to know what's right and what's wrong? You not. You have to have the right Bible first, yes. and then you have to have the right heart. Amen. Let's continue. Whose end shall be according to their works. At the end of the day, they're going to be judged. Sometimes their fruit show right away. Mm-hmm. Sometimes their fruit show later. That's why the Bible says, ye shall know them by their fruits. <clears throat> you know me by my fruits too. Mm-hmm. Each other's fruit. You know, don't, don't just go out there and be like, oh, you know, you know what's the biggest slack that Bible believers always get? You guys are too tough. You have no love. Who is the most loving parents? Telling their children to do right when they're doing wrong. Yes. Amen. Worst parents are who? They let them do everything. Amen. True love as a Bible believer is telling people, what they're doing wrong yes. and to do it right. I mean, we don't just say, burn in hell, I'm happy. No. no. 
don't burn in hell. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen. That's our message. Yes. And just like media, they just cut it. Yeah. They cut what they want, right? You know, I'm pretty sure there's something out there. Probably I have an angry face, you know, <laughs> preaching. You know, you're on your way to hell and then they cut everything out, you know. They're like, this is a, you know, false preacher, you know. This is a cult and stuff, you know. We hear it all the time, but hey, you know, Jesus Christ heard a lot worse than us. Yes. Amen. Yeah. It's a given. Yes. It's something that's expected to happen. If you and I, because the Bible says all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If you're not getting any persecution, if people are not hating you because you're standing for the truth, then you're a compromiser. Yes. You're not. So don't, you know, let's not be, you know, too smart about it, you know, be illusional or delusional about it. If you're not standing for the perfect word of God, there won't be any persecution in your life. I mean, sometimes it's because through your sin, right? Yes. And don't get, you know, confused with that. Your sin will bring you down anyways. But when it comes to the word of God, if you don't stand for King James Bible, your life will be a lot easier. I guarantee. I mean, you know, why, why do you want to get into, you know, this discussion? or argument, or long conversation right. about the perfect word of God, right? You might expect someone to get angry. You might expect someone to cuss at you. You might expect someone to just, you know, go in circles and circles about their circular reasoning. Yeah. But why do you do it? Why do I do it? Because we have to preach the truth. Amen. Because we want people to know the truth. Yes. We want people to wake up and get out of that false you know, doctrine, false religion, and ultimately, many of them aren't even saved. Right. And you want them to get saved. Yeah. And some of them might be saved, but they don't have assurance. Yeah. <laughs> For reals, I mean, the greatest feeling that I ever had was, you know, I found out the King James Bible and I had assurance salvation. Amen. Amen. Uh, Pastor Kim showed me from the Bible, this is why you're saved. Right. No more, no more questions from me. Right. Bible says it. Ever since then, I never, ever doubted my salvation. Amen. I mean, are you doubting your salvation? I mean, even though you accepted Christ from your bottom of your heart as your Lord and Savior and trusted Him as your Lord and Savior, you're still wondering? Are you still questioning where you're going after you die? I mean, it's because you have no faith in the perfect Word of God. Yeah. If you have faith in the perfect Word of God, why would you even question so, you have to understand, do I have final authority today? Do I believe in my final authority? Do I stand for the final authority? And am I being telling others about the final authority? King James Bible. You can't just stop there, brethren. Obviously, telling people about salvation is our priority. And afterwards, you want people to grow. Yes. You have to... Teach them. You have to tell them about King James Bible. Yes. And in order to do that, you have to study. Yeah. I mean, let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Why are we dispensational? Because the Bible says so. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. Amen. But can you believe it? Every other translation changed it. Yes. Yeah. Study is imperative. What does it mean? It's a command. Yes. yes. You have to study. Every translation changed it. Got rid of this word. They said, do your best. Be diligent. Well, what does that mean? You know what? I had a long day of work today. My best is to just look at the Bible. Yes. And I fall asleep. My diligence is to, you know, just go to church, do the Bible study. That's my diligence. Don't ask me anything more. Yeah, you could have all the excuses now because the word has been changed. But King James Bible says study is a command. If you don't study the Word of God, you're sinning. Amen. If I don't stu study the Word of God, I'm sinning. I'm sinning against God because the Bible says to study. But 
majority of people don't study at all. Majority of the people don't even have the right word of God. That's why you have to stand for the perfect word of God. Let's continue. Look at chapter 3, verse 16. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. I mean, this is a great verse to tell people, hey, only the originals are the perfect word of God. Inspire. Let's look at what Timothy had. I know for sure that Timothy wasn't around the time of, you know, Isaiah, yeah. you know, Adam and Eve. No, 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 no. And Moses, you know. Yeah. Let's look at it. 16 says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for first, what? Doctrine. For reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So all scripture. That's right. All scripture. All. But people are like, oh, you know, that all means, you know, when Isaac actually wrote it, right? You know, when Moses wrote it. I don't think so. Why are you skipping the Bible? Let's look at verse 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Man, all these false people, preachers out there, especially workers of the devil, they, they deceive people and they're getting deceived back and forth, back and forth. Look at verse 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured. Okay, so Apostle Paul's telling Timothy, hey, keep what you've learned. Practice it. And especially coming to the scriptures, right? Let's continue. Knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Verse 15. This is it. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. Oh, wow. He was reading holy scriptures when he was little. Yes. And this holy scripture is referring to that inspired word of God. Yes. And it was a copy. Yes. Translation. It wasn't the original. Amen. People say, how do you know King James Bible is the inspired word of God? Does the Bible say it? <laughs> Bible says God preserved his word. And if you study the Bible text lines and translations, yes. King James Bible is the perfect word of God. Amen. Yes. I mean, what more do you need now? If young Timothy, old Timothy, had the perfect word of God, and which was a translation and copy, shows that God preserved his word. Woo! And God preserved his word for us. Yes. King James Bible. Thank you, Lord. So, in conclusion, brethren, you and I have the perfect word of God. Yes. And those who are on the fence and who were like, who are new to this, now you know for sure that there's perfect word of God. Amen. There's King James Bible and there's every other trash out there. Yes. Which is Bible, devil's Bible. Get rid right? Of it. It's time for you as a Bible believing Christian to stand up for the perfect word of God. You gotta preach the word of God. Amen. You gotta spread the word of God. Yes. And you got to make sure that no matter what happens, you're going to keep the King James Word of God. Amen. Then you have to study, you have to meditate, you have to memorize. Yeah. You have to do all those. Mm -hmm. It's really good that you take care of it like this, super precious, right? But it's not good enough. You have to actually open it yeah. and you have to study it. You can't just use this as a pillow, right? Underneath your pillow. Oh, I'm, it's so precious to me. It's going to just go into my brain. I wish, right? Yeah. It doesn't work like that. God says study. And God is perfect God. And God wants effort. God wants you to grow every step of the way. And in order to do that, you have to first stand firmly in the preserved word of God, which is King James Bible. Yes. And you have to learn from it, grow from it. And you have to stand for it. And you have to preach from it. Amen. And then, I tell you what, you're going to become a stronger soldier of Jesus Christ. You're going to appreciate the Bible more. You're going to appreciate this Bible-believing church ministry more. Yes. And ultimately, you're going to glorify God more, and you're going to love your brethren more. Amen. Because that's what the Bible says. Yes. Let's pray. Dear Father, you have given us perfect word of God. But how we treat it, how we use it, how we think about it, Lord, I'm ashamed because you bought 
our church with your precious blood and you preserved your word. Perfect, inspired word of God. But how many times you know, have I taken for granted? How many times have I not preached the word like I should? How many times have I not stood up for perfect word of God, King James Bible, like I should? And Father, I pray that all of us will go back and reflect and get right with you and truly stand up for your word, preach your word, and give glory to you more. I pray that during these last days, Lord, we will be found faithful, Lord. Bless the rest of the services today. And I know that you provide everyone with their needs, but above all, provide spiritual needs and help us to get right with things that we need to get right, Lord. And even so, come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.